We then want to go up. Middle. Down. Middle. Up. Middle. Down. And notice, again, I broke my period up into eight boxes. So I know that a quarter of a period should be two boxes. That's why I was skipping two boxes in between each of these points I graphed. Where the baseline points are, are our vertical asymptotes. We can now graph cosecant. There we go. There's our cosecant graph. So notice the big thing to remember is that secant goes with 1 over cosine and cosecant is 1 over sine. Graphing those cosine and sine graphs first will really help you when you're trying to graph cosecant and secant. For tangent and cotangent, you just have to know what that tangent looks like and know that cotangent is related to it. Speaking of cotangent, here we go. All right, we have a vertical shift of negative five and an amplitude of negative two. This will put us at Get negative five. Let's do this. Perfect. Negative 5, negative 3, and negative 7. We know that our period, 2 pi divided by pi over 6, which is the same as 2 pi times 6 over pi. Pi is cancel, leaving us with a period of 12. Okay, and we're starting three units to the left. Okay, we know cotangent has a vertical asymptote at its starting point. Draw a vertical asymptote, and that means every half a period we have a vertical asymptote. We also know then that we cross the baseline in between the vertical asymptotes. We know that typically cotangent starts from the left up high and comes down to the right. We can check that with our cotangent graph up here. Here we go. But we have this nagging little negative here, which means that we reflect it. And so instead of starting high, we're going to start low and come up. Start low and come up. Start low and come up. And what you do ideally want to do is halfway between that baseline point and the asymptote, you should be crossing the max or min lines. There's cotangent. Okay, for the last video, we're gonna determine the equation when we're given the graph. And there's only two of these. 